Thanks to our friends at The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Check out the link below, fool.com forward slash the smattering, to get access to the 10 best stocks to buy right now. Heiko is not a business a lot of people have heard of, but it has certainly delivered exceptional returns for investors over the long term. And there's a genius reason why it could continue to deliver exceptional returns for investors going forward. I'm Jason Hall. This is The Smattering. Tyler Crow is here. He is a genius with exceptional knowledge about Heiko. Hey, buddy. Now you've really set me up for failure with that. We've played the expectation game. You've, you've made me an expert and genius, and now everyone's going to dis, dis, be disappointed. So thank you for that. Hey, I do what I can. You know, it's it's all about it's all about setting others up for failure. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But no, this is it's this is an interesting business because it is relatively unknown for for most people. It doesn't sell to consumers, but it supplies some really really important businesses out there with some really really important parts. You want to tell people what Heiko does? You don't know what who they are probably but you know what they do work on and that is jet engines notably by companies like ge raytheon uh they do repairs for companies like southwest airlines or delta or anything like that heiko's primary business is the kind of refurbishment repair kind of unique engineering and contract work associated with commercial aviation and at first glance, you hear that and you say, ooh, that's that's a tough business because commercial aviation, as we saw during the pandemic, came to a grinding halt. Uh, and it's not the first time we've seen something like that happen either. Uh, Post 9-11 was a, another awful, awful time for commercial aviation. But one of the things that makes Heiko unique versus so many other of the commercial aviation kind of tangential uh, commercial aviation companies is so much of its business is related to the aftermarket uh, servicing repairs uh, parts associated with the commercial aviation industry rather than the manufacturer of new product. Manufacturing new products can be a, a much more challenging because you know it all, it all depends on when airlines want to buy, don't want to buy, how good Boeing and Airbus are at actually producing those vehicles, which has been a less reliable thing. However, maintaining the existing fleet is a much more consistent thing let's think about it like a.o smith with water heaters right it's kind of the same idea where buying a new one or for new construction happens uh, on a, a a less predictable schedule but the replacement of the existing fleet of water heaters you know if yours goes out you're buying one like right away you're not sitting and waiting to oh whatever it's the same thing with uh, airline uh, airline repairs you have to do repairs on these things on a pretty regular basis and if something on one on a fl on a on an engine an engine or any other part of the plane goes down it is fixed almost immediately because you're not going to sit with an idle asset that's one of the things that you know airlines cannot do they can delay making purchases but you can't have a bunch of idle planes just kind of sucking up capital for you they need to be utilized and so that's one of the things that has made heiko unique in the commercial airline space versus a lot of the other kind of we'll call them oem suppliers original equipment manufacturer suppliers for the commercial airline industry so thinking about where the the airline industry is right now again you, you mentioned the coronavirus pandemic and how air travel ground to a halt. If we go back to 2018, 2019, there was this expectation of a multi-decade growth in global demand. We knew that the Airbuses and the Boeings of the world, their their backlogs, the, their, their manufacturing line, they were basically filled up for years and years because of that growth in demand. It does seem like the greater long-term tailwinds, forgive the, the accidental pun there, but they should remain in, in Heiko's favor going forward. Jason, apologize for the pun. He had no intention of actually apologizing. He loves those kind of puns, just as a little aside here on this video. I, I apologize to draw attention to it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, you know, the growing fleet is just kind of an added uh, aspect of the business, which gives it that little extra lift. Hey, you, you can't, you can't say anything to me lift, about, I know, about, right? about, but yeah. And, you know, when it all comes down to this, all the things that we talk about, you know, the, the most important part is, is we can talk about macro, we can talk about the what works, what doesn't for a company. But 
what it all boils down to is, is whether or not this company can generate returns for investors. And a lot of times when we talk about these things, it's a guessing work. But Heiko, over its history, has proven to be one of those companies that can. Uh, I can tell you over the past decade, it's generated ninefold returns, total returns for shareholders versus the S&P up about 227%. So again, that includes everything that we've dealt with during and a and after the yeah. pandemic. It's it's a business that's relatively high margin for what it does. You know, it 20, 25, 26 percent margins to service somebody else's equipment and do for refurbishments and things like that is is good money in the industrial manufacturing space. You know, it, it's not software, but for for what it does, because it's going to be labor intensive, that those are great margins, and they're going to be able to command prices because they're doing services. For the same reasons, it's when we talk about Heiko, one of those companies that generates shareholder returns, not necessarily from huge growth, but from value creation. It has consistently increased its operating margins, which is important, right? That operating leverage, and to me, that's kind of like the secret sauce here is as it's grown its revenue, it's really continued to operate very, very a lean business and turn more of the revenue growth that it gets into better margins, better cash flows, and better returns for its investors.